Recently, Kathy Wood has been describing her various different ARK ETFs as being deep value as they've sold off, where she thinks they can compound to potentially 40% annualized in the years ahead. I'm generally very skeptical of this type of marketing. However, one of her portfolio companies that could potentially achieve that type of outlandish potential return is Stoneco. STNE is the ticker, where not only does she own it in her finance ETF, but it's also owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. I did a prior video on Stoneco, STNE, if you're interested in checking that out. And let's follow up because the stock is down so significantly. I wanted to understand in greater detail what's going on here. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel and you're watching Unrivaled Investing, a no-hype mission-focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. In full disclosure, this is not financial advice. And at the time of this video publication, I did not own stock in Stoneco. STNE is the ticker. So first note, I did a prior video on Stone, STNE, that went into greater detail regarding their operations. So check that out. Check out that video to understand the opportunity that they're looking to tackle. Since then, however, the stock has gotten crushed down nearly 70% since I did that video. So I want to revisit this to say, wait a second, is this an opportunity here? After all, you know, it is owned by both Kathy Wood and Warren Buffett, and from its high earlier this year, it's down almost 90%, something like 85%, just tremendous drop. So it's also worthwhile to understand that a big component of the recent drop is due to changes in policy by the U.S. Federal Reserve. So it's not only the micro, which I will focus predominantly on in this video, but there's also macro backdrop. You know, in short, when the U when the U.S. Fed raises rates, other countries and other emerging markets need to raise rates as well to remain competitive. This leads to weaker demand and lower valuations. So just being an emerging market stock, particularly a Brazilian stock, is a large part of why it's declined. So check out that Save Yourself video if you're interested. So as a quick recap, Stoneco is an enabler of micro and small and medium-sized businesses in Brazil. So about 70% of their operations is from payment and financial services. This includes processing charges for the merchants they enable. Think of point of sale, you know, credit card acceptance, equipment, rental fees, and credit-driven products like prepayments on, on credit-driven transactions so the merchants can get the funds sooner. So they enable a merchant who accepts a credit card. The, the merchant says, hey, I'd love to get my funds sooner from the credit, you know, the card issuer. And they say, oh yeah, we'll provide those funds sooner than what the card issuer actually provides. They're also looking to grow via banking and insurance-driven products that they can cross-sell to these same merchant customers. The remainder is software solutions, which really recently completed a major acquisition links and enables merchants to run their business various different you know functionality a lot of different industry verticals links was a major acquisition for them you know covering a lot of different types of software solutions for example like you know CRM customer relationship management software a lot of different things the reality is that their underlying business has actually done really well over time and grown quite quickly. You can see how their active merchant clients is something like up over 100% year to date to nearly 1.4 million and how revenue has grown so significantly in the third quarter 21. If you adjust for their recent acquisition, instead of the 57% growth, it's closer to 26% growth, but still very fast. So why is the stock getting crushed despite arguably looking at very strong results. So the reality is that Stone is a really messy story. I mean, this is way more complex than most of the companies I generally look at is there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of reasons why. Um, you know, first of all, beyond the Brazil and emerging market stocks getting sold off. So number one, their third quarter 21 results looked terrible where they posted this huge loss of 1.26 billion uh, Brazilian rei versus per previous gain in the prior year period. This was almost entirely due to a write down in investment in a Brazilian bank. Once again, miss, messy pieces here because this isn't necessarily a permanent impairment as it's tied to the public market value of an investment they have in a, in a bank called Banco Inter, where they own about 5% of it, and Banco Inter is a public company, but the stock price declined. So adjusting for the stock price decline, Banco Inter, their adjusted net income here was actually positive 132 million REI. This, however, is still down about 12% year over year relative to last year. So why is that? So once again, messy stories. Management attributes the decline to a few different things. One, interest rates. You know, rates have been moving higher as Brazil's had been having to raise, you know, do their equivalent of rate hikes. So the cost to make these prepayment to their merchants actually got a lot more expensive to provide that sort of capital. Two, they had problems with their previous credit products. I talked about that in the last video. This had to do with government regulation around uh, collateralized credit card products and effectively 
um, cor- there was effectively a problem that resulted in a bunch of uh, bum um, merchants that didn't actually pay what they they owed. And then the third component is that management said, hey, look, there's a lot of opportunity here. Let's invest another 120 million REI into this business for things like customer support, software, and building out new products like insurance. So the question you're probably wondering is like, Daniel, there's a lot of moving pieces here, but the stock is trading like it's going out of business. Are they running out of cash? And that's always an important thing to consider. You know, is there this potential blow up risk? The short answer is I don't think so. Not 100% sure though, as they had 2.7 billion REI in adjusted net cash at the end of the third quarter. That said, it is an adjusted figure when you, you know, it's, it's and this figure is also down significantly from the start of this year, largely due to their acquisition of links and funding their customers business with repayment solutions so that that was also a significant cash outlay you know the 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 prepayment solutions once again that's where a merchant wants to receive the proceeds from credit card transactions sooner and stone provides the funds from the custom uh, from the cut with the customer's card issuer owing them the proceeds so this is effectively paying the merchants before the merchants would actually get get their funds and they're providing this prepayment Uh, and, and so looking at this you know this uh, it always also makes me nervous when i'm reading an adjusted net figure and so this adjusted figure includes a huge receivable 18.5 billion in accounts receivable from card issuers which i think you know is is a very you know stable you know this is effectively the brazilian banks that are these you know this this counterparty here so i i think that they should get those funds okay so what about valuation here as we look at stone co first quick plug if you're interested in following along with my personal financial journey go to unrivaledinvesting.com where each month i call out potential multi-baggers as well as my personal portfolio we also have an exclusive community dedicated to learning and trying to find exceptional companies on discord so once again if you're interested go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click join the journey. And if you enjoy videos like this, learning about individual companies, please make a point of hitting that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. So Stoneco is actually significantly more complicated than many of the companies I generally look at. There's a lot of moving pieces here, and it's certainly possible that I miss something. For example, I barely talked about the macro risks that might be pushing down Brazilian stocks. That said, I think a key aspect of why both Kathy Wood and Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway still own the stock as of the third quarter 2021 is that despite the huge stock drop, it seems like they're still executing. It seems like Stone Co. is still delivering. The Brazilian market has lots of opportunity, and they continue to take payment processing market share. So it seems like they're doing what's necessary to win, and that's what I like to see. And adjusting for a lot of these moving parts, it looks like they're still profitable. Since my last video, I significantly revised my hypothetical framework for Stone Stone Co., projecting much more conservative future growth over the next five years, lower profit margins, partly due to their acquisition of links, and lower end multiples. So, you know, trying to be more conservative, you know, sort of saying, well, let's let's take an even more conservative view, especially because now the stock price is down. Maybe you could, you know, say, hey, I can conservatively underwrite this scenario and still get a potentially attractive return. Of course, stock prices go way higher and lower than a hypothetical framework that I'm penciling out. And a lot depends on execution and sentiment where, you know, for example, if they do not execute, if they have significant cash burn, you know, and, and, you know, they don't actually have the cash to, to meet the underlying needs of their business, then I would expect the stock to still drop significantly. Personally, I'm actually very attracted to this overall situation. I like bargain hunting with growth companies down significantly. And Stone is exactly that as they're rapidly growing and taking market share. The question is whether the story is too complex or if there are too many moving parts that make it too risky. You know, as I look at this valuation, you do have a couple of things. You know, one, for example, is the Brazilian REI. It has depreciated relative to the U.S. dollar, something to the tune of 7% in the last few months. And so that is significant. Um, the stock price is down significantly, seventy something like 70% since I did the last video. Uh, I am penciling out a strong growth this year, partly due to the the acquisition of links. So saying 30 to 40% growth this next year, I am sort of penciling out slightly lower profit margins. Historically, they were able to do 40% pre-tax profit margins, like real profit margins. That's not a phony baloney adjusted figure. And so, you know, I, I 
do recognize, like I'm saying 25 to 35%, that might be conservative, but that might also face the new realities of the business with potentially higher interest rates. So I want to reflect that you know, concern, 25% tax rate. So then the question is, well, what's your growth rate in the years ahead? You know, I'm saying, trying to be conservative here, saying 15 to 25%, you know, adjusting for the the implications of their acquisition of links, adjusting for that sort of pro forma, they're growing something like 26%. So a range of 15 to 25% in the years ahead, a range of N multiples of let's say 20 to 30 times five years from now. And the reality is you get a very, very reasonable risk reward here, you know, saying potentially several hundred percent upside if they execute. And, you know, based on what I would argue, you know, the the model that Kathy Wood might be using is she might be saying, you know, like, hey, the growth rate's going to be way higher than this and assume some kooky dukes multiple five years from now that that justifies a thousand percent upside or something like that. You know, I'm I'm not personally doing that. Um, But, uh, you know, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yeah, this this smells right to me. I mean, the, the challenge is that you know, and it, it's a it's a question is, you know, the, is there is it too complex? You know, because with increased complexity, it increases the risks that, you know, I'm I personally am overlooking, you know, something and it's something like if you decide to pull the trigger, you're overlooking. And so that's that's an aspect, you know, are there too many moving parts that make it too risky here? You know, for example, part of their how do they finance their prepayments is effectively borrowing money or selling receivables. So that that does become a question mark of like, is that a challenge for them in the future if interest rates in Brazil continue to rise? You know, I, I haven't personally made it part of my own investment journey, but it wouldn't surprise me to see it up several hundred percent in the future. Uh, personally, I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking perhaps I should spend more time looking at Brazilian stocks, whoever has several of them have sold off and maybe there are others with a more sort of straightforward story that does have significant growth uh, and just doesn't have all these different moving parts that make it so much, I'd argue, makes, Stone Co. has so many different pieces that it does make it a lot harder to sort of, oh, this is the clean story. It's just, there's so many things going on here. You know, a bad credit portfolio, you know, they just did this big acquisition. Um, they have this the Banco Inter that, that that fluctuates, and what's that actually worth? So there's a lot of different pieces here. I, you know, I, I personally, I'd rather stick to simpler stories, but that's that's just me. Where it's like, oh yeah, this is this this is the trajectory of what what we're looking at here, and oh, the, like my my most recent potential multibagger. You know, here's a software company growing at forty percent. You know, its closest comp it trades at half of its closest comp, and you know, management has done this story multiple times and they've sold their company multiple times so i'm like i'm looking at this and saying oh okay this is the type of thing or it, it's a playbook that makes sense whereas here this is a little bit tougher for me I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion you know looking at stone co if you feel like daniel i'm, I'm really missing something here or if there's a great brazilian company that trades on the let's say the u.s exchange that you think is way undervalued and may arguably a unrivaled company i definitely want to hear about it uh, so, you know, definitely share your own personal take, especially if you're an investor in stone or if you feel like I'm just been way off on something here. So if this video has been helpful for you, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in.